Happy 2018 Metalheads. Uh, today I'm going to show you the watercolory looking bases that I did for Nesta's Toha at the end of September. You might have remembered the video that I showed uh, with Nesta and I from Nessie Knows showing what I did with uh, painting his Toha, but in case you didn't, I'll make sure to put the link in the description so that way you feel caught up with what's going on. What I have here is I have this base. This is just for demo purposes so that I can show you guys how to put on the city texture astro granite so that's there this already has the astro granite texture on there but we'll get to the rest of that in a minute I got some sign white prima and I also have scale color inks and intense green intense chestnut and intense wood guess I won't have to shake the green as much since I already turned around and knocked it over all right so to start, because uh, I'm doing this video because some people asked me about how I went about doing uh, these bases. They're quick and easy. It's nothing uh, major. It's nothing fancy. It's just for the purpose of getting, uh, making the base look somewhat nice and just getting it ready to get on the tabletop, which was exactly what Nesta wanted for his Toha when I painted them. So to start, I got here the Citadel Astro Granite. Uh, for those of you who've never seen it before, this is one of Citadel's textures in order to uh, that that easily paints on to uh, any base, and it creates it makes it look nicer so it doesn't look so plain or whatever. This basically has some sand in it. It adds some grit. That's basically what its main purpose is, and it has like a little bit of paste in it and stuff to give it some thickness. And this is one of these times, one of these types of things where uh, if you have crappy brushes, don't throw them away. You see here that I'm using a crappy brush. It's very old, and it has glue and all kinds of fun stuff, water effects. I I've used it for everything. So here I'm painting on the Astro Granite, and you can see here with the um, my crappy brush that I'm using that it um, it goes on it's a little chunky you gotta kinda dab 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 don't just you know smoothly paint it in don't like spread it as if it were butter or peanut butter whatever because then it won't exactly come on uh, to make it look more realistic with the grit giving it you know the texture making it look like dirt and so that's just basically what you're trying to do with the Astro Granite, is you're trying to create the texture and make it look like dirt. So that's just basically what you're doing. And then when you finish painting it on, it's going to basically look like this. This is just a regular 40 mil base from GW. And this is what it looks like with the Astro Granite when it's dried. You see how it looks like actual dirt. There's, you know, some texture. It's not all even. It's, it's in, you know, it's just random as it should be, like, like it would be, you know, with nature. So let me put this aside, and I'm going to start on this part by getting ready to prime it. When you prime this, what you're going to want to do now, if you've seen, uh, if you, or when you get a chance to look at the video, you'll see that I basically did. Nesta's Toha in sketch style, uh, which was a uh, technique that was brought into miniature painting by Matt DiPietro. Uh, you can find him on Miniature Monthly and on ContrastMiniatures.com. And he, you know, Nestor just wanted sketch style just for something simple to put on the table. And so what I'm going to basically do is sort of sketch style when it comes to doing the priming, and I'm going to use a brighter white, which will be the golden titanium white on the tips is what I'm going to do just to make certain parts of it a little brighter than the rest of it. So if you've never used Stino Res for, for brush, uh, hand brush before, you can. Some people don't know that because when people see Badger airbrush stuff and you know the paints and the primers and everything that they automatically think that it's only airbrush product and that's really not necessarily the case you can hand brush on all the with all the paints too that includes the Minotaur line of paints so what I'm doing is I'm just lightly priming over and I'm basically doing all the the highest parts here and what I'm going to do for the rest of it for the for the rest of the surface is I'm going to still use the Sino Res white primer but I'm just gonna thin it down some that way it's not as bright as the highest part as the higher parts rather 
but it'll still have some primer on it enough to where the ink will adhere so and I'm just you know going lightly I'm not trying to I'm not trying to go crazy with it or anything like that because again what you're trying to do is you're just trying to quickly get it done get it on the table especially if you're one that uh, has demo armies and stuff to teach people games like teaching infinity or teaching war machine and stuff you, you want to pick up whatever techniques in order to quickly get an army on the table which is totally understandable because then you have your own stuff that you want to paint too right and I thin down some of the Steino res and I can always thin a little more and I'm just spreading it around because I don't want it to be as bright as up here but you still see that there's some primer that's getting on there and that's okay by us right and I'm going back in I wet the brush spread it around because that's another way that you can thin down areas where it looks a little too thick you just, you just go back in and you can clean your brush and just spread it around I'm kind of feeling like Bob Ross, spread it around and it's going to take a few minutes to dry because it is still acrylic so but then again a lot of you already know that so that's fine and you can move around your mat while you're at it like I just did awesome so I'm gonna let that dry for a few minutes and then I'm gonna show you the next part okay we're back so now this is dry Oop, and I'm throwing things and here is the golden titanium white this is uh, known as pretty much the brightest white for highlighting and such. A lot of people argue that with you, apparently. I found that out myself. <laughs> um, now, just so that we know, you can, if you want to, depending on what kind of look you're going for, you don't have to necessarily use the ink colors that I have here in the video. This is just particularly what people ask me about and what I use on Nesta's models, just so that we're clear. Uh, this is showing grays and whites for, for priming, basically, but you can, if you want, depending on what look you're going for, you could thin down some black primer if you want to, some other different color. You, you can use blue inks to show water, whatever it is that you want, just so that we're clear. So I'm going to get ready to put on this titanium white. going to do just a touch, because that's really all I need. I don't really need a lot. I'm just doing a little bit because basically what I'm doing is I'm just getting the highest areas the ones the areas that I want the most highlighted basically and I don't know how well you can see it here on the camera but you see a little bit of a difference of how wide it is compared to the rest it's just a very highly pigmented color and there are uh, quite a few people who play infinity who know about this with uh, titanium white actually it was thanks to if I'm not mistaken on Hell Geraldes I think he uses this white for you know the highlights on his figures so. see and it doesn't have to be perfect you don't have to and that's the point of this. You, you don't have to be perfect. It could be random. All right. Got some titanium white on there. And I just didn't want to do too much, just enough to make it look cool. And if you want to go back in, like if you feel that some spots are a little too dark, because some I you saw me do some thin down white primer and it dries a little darker sometimes because of how much I thinned it down so if I feel that it's 
a little darker than I wanted, then I can always go back in with some thin down primer. Also in between shots I did go through and pick out areas that I might have missed a little bit because obviously when I'm painting from this angle it's not exactly easy for me to always see everything that I'm doing here so so yeah I put a little more primer just so that there's just a little more I'm running the brush kind of as I go along too kind of move the brush in such a way to help it get its point back this is a pretty old brush too but still works for things like this for priming and large base coating and stuff like that so yeah so I went back in a little bit now I'm gonna let that dry and then we're gonna go to this step with the inks alright now comes the fun part with the ink right here I have the scale 75 ink tense chestnut I have here the ink tense green and I have here the ink tense wood chestnut for that more orangey lighter looking brown the ink tense wood gives a darker brown so that way it shows a little bit of difference in color with the dirt just like it would in in nature and then we have the ink tense green just to make it you know look like grass I this is a vivid color green you might want to use for yourself a darker one or something but I used the more vivid color because Nesta's Toha was done all in vivid colors, vivid reds and purples and stuff like that. So that's why I wanted to kind of keep up that look by, you know, putting bright colors in. So, uh, also, I had all three inks at the time when I did Nestor's Toha. I had them all on the palette at once because I also batch painted them because there was 55 models. So I batch painted them. So this is also why I had all three of the inks. And then also I found that by doing that, when I put the inks on, they blended together better. Whereas if I would have done it separately, then one ink would have dried and then put the other one and they wouldn't have blended together like when I did them. So I found that that's how I found that this also worked out. I haven't really thought of a name for this. The only thing I was able to come up with was like maybe watercolor look bases. But I'm going to start here with the chestnut, ink tense chestnut. And you just just go random with it. Just, you know, I didn't thin them down, the inks. I didn't have to. Just kind of just be random. Just have fun with it. Clean it off. Do some green. Oh, yeah, buddy. And you see how it mixes together? And it blends. And it looks better than if I just went through and did them one by one. They they wouldn't have blended, it wouldn't have looked as, as nice personally. I didn't I don't think anyway. And then I'm gonna go in with the intense wood for that darker color. And it doesn't matter, you can put some darker there or you just whatever you want. The point is you just have fun with it, just go around, be random. Just have a good old time. See? and this is just one coat and if you want you can stop here if that's what you want to do or there were um, on some of them because there were so many models like I told you that I did go back in I waited until it dried and then you can go back in and do a second coat if you want to or just lay it on nice and thick You can go back in and just keep going until you're happy with it. You can put one color over another. Why not? All right? Jar it. And see, it's got that kind of earth look. Just nice and easy. You don't have to go crazy because for tabletop you don't really anyway and they're going to get ruined over time by constantly touching them anyway and you could still after they dry if you're going to varnish the top 
and you're going to spray like dull coat, just wait until it fully dries first. That's very important. Whether you're going to brush on the varnish or spray it on, wait until the base completely dries first. All right, we're going to let that dry. Okay, so here's what the base looks like dried. I know it still looks a little shiny. This is because for those of you who have never used the Scale 75 inks before, they do uh, tend to dry a little bit glossy, but you can always matte it down by using a matte varnish, either by brushing on some matte varnish or spraying it on when you spray test as dull coat, whatever it is that you choose. So they don't have to be glossy, or you can leave them like that if they make you happy. That's okay too. So as you can see here, there are some dark, some dark areas, and there are more highlighted areas on the base as well. Now if, again, if it seems too light to you in some areas, you could always go back over it with more ink. Uh, if any, any time that you use inks and washes and such, the more layers that you put on, the darker it gets, the more intense and what have you. But I'm pretty happy with this, and that's pretty much what I did with Nesta's bases, and he was very, very happy with them. So again, uh, not I'm not sure if anybody already did this before. I'm not sure exactly what to call this, but I guess we'll just call them watercolor look bases, I guess would be a good term for them. Um, so yeah, so be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Check us out on the web at metalheadminis.com. Need to send an email? Got any questions or suggestions? mhmpropainting at gmail.com. Again, happy 2018. Hope this becomes a great year, best year yet for you and, and for us as well. And have yourselves a great day.